Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to Church Online. I say this, I know, probably every single week, but we really do mean it with all of our hearts. Thank you for allowing us to come into your home to share, in a sense, fellowship together as we uh, worship the Lord together, as we also look at God's Word as well. Well, listen, I want to make a couple of announcements to you, and I want to make sure that you, you do catch this one here is we have been meeting on Sunday evenings in person at 6 o'clock. And, of course, we've been having some wonderful times together around the altar, praise and worship. It's just been a a wonderful, wonderful time, Um, a great alternative to the sanctuary at this time. But I just want to let you know that we won't be meeting at 6 o'clock tonight. We'll actually be meeting at 5 o'clock. So please make note of that. We'll be meeting at 5 p.m. tonight in the courtyard area, and we'll enjoy a time of worship. So again, we've been meeting at 6 o'clock, but our time has changed, and we'll be meeting at 5 p.m. in the courtyard area. And once again, uh, we take every precaution to make sure chairs and surroundings are disinfected. We have sanitization stations for uh, washing your hands, if uh, that's what you feel comfortable with. Our seating is spaced as well as we've encouraged folks to wear a mask as well. So anyway, we just, again, we want to encourage you to come. We've had a wonderful time together on Sunday evenings. It's just great to be able to see each other face to face. Well, there's another thing that I want to encourage you to do, as you know, from watching television, you are probably getting blasted with commercial after commercial on this measure, on this candidate. And if you're like me, you're thinking like, boy, oh boy. And you want to be able to to, to be educated when you get to that, uh, filling out that ballot. So I want to let you know a, uh, a website that has been so helpful to Terry and I and our family is uh, it's, it's, it's this here. It's prayvotestand.org. Prayvotestand.org. And there, there is just tons of tremendous Bible-based uh, materials that you'll be able to comb through. And after you do that and you've prayed, you'll be able to make a really a solid biblical decision when you get to the polls or when you're filling out your, uh, your ballot. So I want to encourage you, though, because um, it's, again, because it's been so helpful to Terry and I. So it's prayvotestand.org, prayvotestand.org. And again, there's a, uh, a ton of information there that will help you in coming to uh, your decision on which way that you will vote. So I want to encourage you in that way. And then let's, uh, uh, let's just before we come to the Lord in worship and we spend time in worship to the Lord, I, I want to say one more thing, and that is there are many of you who have been so faithful with your tithes and with your offerings, and I want to say a, a deep, heartfelt thank you. It's what helps us to move forward. We've been at this for probably about six months now. They say that this probably isn't going to go away yesterday, barring a miracle of God, which is extremely possible. Uh, All things are possible with God. Um, However, we've been at this for six months, and uh, contributions can have a way of moving up and down. But I want to say thank you for your faithfulness in worshiping the Lord with your tithes and with your offerings. So just before we we look at the scripture this morning, I, I want us just to open our hearts in praise and worship to the Lord for who he is. He is great. He is faithful. He's merciful. He's gracious. So let's just worship the Lord now as we move into this time of worship, and then we'll be continuing in our studies, our uh, series on faith. So let's worship the Lord together. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me In all my days I am held in your hands 
From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Sing it again, I love you Lord I love you Lord Oh, your mercy never fails me In all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God We sing this out all my life all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, I will sing of the goodness of God. darkest nights you will love me like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I will say how the goodness of God
Well, I know you agree with me that it's always good to share our hearts in worship and praise to the Lord. And I don't know if you found this to be true, but, you know, I, I thoroughly enjoy worship with the band and the worship team and all. But, you know, it's a wonderful thing to know that God enjoys our worship, whether we're driving down the street in the car and we're just singing praise to him, or we may be at a kitchen table, uh, like you may be this morning or the living room, wherever, but that we still can worship the Lord and praise him for who he is. <clears throat> well, listen, I want to continue in the series of messages that we've been into, and we've been looking at the subject of faith. Now, faith is not like this simple uh, definition or it's a simple thing to explain or, uh, no, it's multifaceted. There's all kinds of different sides to faith. Uh, but boy, oh boy, when you have faith, as I know you do, you know the Lord, you have faith, boy, you can, uh, as the scriptures say, you can move a mountain. But we want to look at, 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 continue looking at this, you know, how do we build our faith? You know, how does, where do we get faith from? How does our faith build? How do we get to the place where we can believe God for, for miracles? Well, listen, we spent some time uh, last Sunday morning on this here, and I want to continue in the series that we've been in. And we're looking last week and then this week at imagination. Imagination and faith, they, they really do go together. And one of the greatest gifts, we mentioned this last week, one of the greatest gifts that God has given to you, think about it, is the gift of imagination. The gift of imagination. The, uh, when, when, you, uh, when you think about it, you almost can't do anything without imagining anything great. You can't create anything or make anything <clears throat> without imagination. So we, we've learned this here is that everything, everything starts with imagination. Nothing becomes a reality until there is imagination, there's dreaming, there's vision. Uh, think about it in your own life. Think about those who you know that are followers of Jesus, people of, of tremendous faith. You'll always find that they're people of imagination. They're people who can dream. They're people who have vision. You see, because without imagination, um, we can't even make good decisions. And in fact, our decisions uh, are always coupled with imagination. You think about, well, if I make this decision and I say yes to this, this is what it's going to look like. Or if I say no to this, you imagine, well, if I say no, then probably this is what's going to take place in my life. So imagination, it's really a part of our lives. And the greater your imagination, the greater your dreams, the greater your vision, the, 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 uh, the greater... Uh, capacity you'll have to believe God for the impossible. Now, I mentioned this, and I believe this with all of my heart, because I have never lived in a day like we're living in today. I, 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 I can't, I could have never imagined that the last past six months have been what they have been. I couldn't, couldn't have imagined that there. But one of the things that I have also come to realize is I don't think in my lifetime anyway, there has ever been a greater opportunity for the gospel message to pierce hearts of men and women, boys and girls, than there is like today. There is a receptivity to the gospel message like never before, and no wonder people are, 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 are reaching. There, there's a void in people. People are parched spiritually they're they're void they're they're racked with fear they're they're racked with anxieties in fact those are the the uh the 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 words of the day fears and anxiety we 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 see it in so many places and so people are ripe for the gospel message there's a void there there's a vacuum in souls and i believe that god wants us to become greater people of faith and imagination dreams vision than ever before because the need is great. The church is at a point where it is desperately needed to be what the church has always been in society. And so I'm excited about becoming a greater person of faith 
And I'm excited for you to become a greater person of faith as well. So let's just let our, our imaginations run uh, Godwardly. Say, God, take me and use my life like never before. So we look at imagination, and really it's, it's a part of our lives. Now, the scripture says three things about imagination. One of the things it says is there's some things that we should not imagine. It also says there's some things that we cannot imagine. And then there are, there are passages of scripture that say this, that you, you can imagine, and God wants you to imagine in these areas. So, well, what does that look like? There are some things that we should not imagine. There's some things that we just should not imagine. Well, one of them is worry. See, worry, there's a lot of imagination in worry because we worry sometimes greatly, greatly do we worry about circumstances and situations that haven't even happened. And they say that 90 some percent of worry never, never comes to fruition. And so what, what is worry? Well, worry is, is our imagination. Something happens, and then we begin to envision things. Well, gosh, this is what's going to happen. Um, I've, I've heard people who have said, man, I just was worrying about the coronavirus. I was at the supermarket, and somebody had contracted this, the, uh, the virus, overheard them talking, and I thought, oh, boy, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I went home, and oh, man, I... I I trust, trust that in the next 14 days, nothing shall. And, and, and it's not to say that we're not to be careful. We're supposed to be careful. But to allow worry to, to just overrun our mind, our will, and our emotions with fear and anxiety. It's, uh, it's not the way God would have it. And so there's some things that we shouldn't, uh, that we shouldn't imagine. Uh, worry is one of them. And again, worry is, is, uh, is we imagine something in our minds. We go over and over and over it again until it just has taken hold of us. And then there's another thing that we should not imagine, that's lust. There's another thing that we should not imagine, it's revenge. Oh, I'm going to get them. And don't our imaginations go crazy with that there. So there's some things that scripture says, don't imagine. You shouldn't be imagining this here. But then it says also there's some things we cannot imagine in uh and it's true, when you think about it, we can't imagine the power of the God we serve. We can try, yeah, but boy, we fall so short. I mean, how can, you, how can you imagine the power of God when he made this world from nothing? He put the stars in space, the sun, the moon. Uh, we, we look at God's creation, it's like, uh, all we can do is look at it, shake our heads and, thought, and think, wow, the power power of God to speak stuff into existence is beyond my intellect. Not that I'm the, the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I'm telling you, right, that is way far beyond my intellect. To uh, I try to, when I get up in the mornings and look at the stars in the sky that God has placed there, I, uh, I always communicate it to the Lord. So, Lord, I just can't, I can't imagine you're a, you're a great power, but boy, do I enjoy it. Thank you for your creation. So there's some things that we can't imagine. One is God's creation. The other one is, is God's love. I can't imagine God's love for us, the, the amount of love that he has for us. And there's another thing we can't imagine. The scripture talks, we can't really imagine what heaven's going to be like. We, uh, we try to, to measure the dimensions and try to get a picture and, a, and envision the, the immensity, the size of heaven but we really can't. We're stuck to, to, to numbers and space and sound, these kinds of things. What do we, what do you say? It's like a three dimension, three dimensional world we live in. And heaven is a lot more than three dimensions. So that's something we can't even imagine. We know it's going to be a great place because the Lord is there. And worship will be pure. We'll see loved ones that have gone on before. We'll walk streets of gold. Can you imagine what the music will be like? Totally different than what we have. Because there's no time. Uh, our music is set to timing. So, uh, wow, what heaven is going to be like. We can't really imagine that there. And then the scripture says there's some things that we should imagine that we looked at. And uh, the scripture says in Philippians 4, it says, fix your thoughts. A great answer to worry. 
is this passage. The scripture says, fix your thoughts on what is true, true, what is true, what's factual, and honorable and right. Think about the things that are pure, lovely, admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So there's some things that we should set our minds on. And when we do set our minds and focus in these areas, we find that worry begins to subside and our faith begins to build and our imagination begins to grow as well, our vision and our dream. Well, there's a relationship between your imagination and faith. And I would just want to review these real quick. Like my imagination, your imagination shapes our lives. The scripture says in Proverbs 23, verse number seven, it says, for as a man thinks in his heart, what? You're right, so is he. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs chapter four, verse number 23 says, be careful, a great admonition here, be careful how you think. Why? Because your life is shaped by your thoughts. And we've got to remember that. The second thing we looked at is imagination is essential. It's a must to living a life of faith. The Bible says, what is faith? In Hebrews chapter 11, verse number one, what is faith? Well, it's the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. It's the evidence of things we cannot see. We, most of us have probably memorized that passage of scripture. In the King James Version, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So God gives us a couple of ways of seeing, doesn't he? We uh, see physically with our eyes, but he also has given us an imagination. Our mind, our will, our emotion, our mind it can imagine, can dream, can, uh, can get vision for what God wants to do in our lives and through our lives. And the third thing is, great lives, we've learned, are built around great dreams. They're built around great need, dreams. You see, each and every one of us, we need something bigger than ourselves to draw us out of ourselves to grow better in ourselves, to be a great person, greatly used of God. Great lives are built around great dreams. And the fourth thing that we looked at was God's dream is bigger for my life than my dream. Uh, the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says this here in the message. It says, God can do anything. God can do anything, you know. He says, Far more than you can ever, here's the word again, far more than you can ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. So God's dream for you is huge. It's big. It's big. So imagine, imagine, dream about what God can do in your life and how he wants to use you in your families, with your friends with the people that are out there where there is such an enormous vacuum, powerful vacuum in the soul. It's empty, and there's a desperate need for God. And only Jesus can fill that vacuum and bring peace, and God wants to use us. Well, this morning I want to look at four more things. One of them is, uh, that we want to continue here, is doubt. What's the enemy of imagination? Doubt. Doubt is. Doubt's the enemy of imagination, doubt can neutralize your imagination. Doubt is the enemy of imagination. Doubt is the enemy of imagination. Now listen, when you were a child, I remember myself, boy, we had, didn't we have the greatest imaginations? The uh, dreams we would have, visions of, of grandeur, we would, we would just, uh, we had tremendous imagination, and then all of a sudden, we get older in life, and life starts to happen to us, and we get hit here or there, and all of a sudden, concerns and fears begin to invade our souls, and we start shaking our heads and saying, no, I can never do that. No, I can never do that. So-and-so said this about me, so they're probably right. No, uh, listen, doubt can absolutely neutralize and destroy your <clears throat> imagination. And that's why we need to cry out to God for courage. See, courage, we, we don't need courage. 
if there are concerns and their fears. But listen, uh, every one of us have experienced and do experience fears and concerns and all. But what courage is, courage and faith in the Lord is moving forward in the face of my fears, moving forward in spite of it, uh, in spite of those fears, that's courage. That's courage. That's Courage is saying, I'm not going to let those doubts, I'm not going to let that unbelief rule my life, destroy my imagination. No, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to move forward in spite of my fears, in spite of my doubts. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to doubt my doubts, and I'm going to believe God's word, and I'm going to move forward, and I'm going to dream. And I'm telling you what, uh, that your doubts will dissipate. You begin to talk and pray like the, it'll dissipate. Faith will grow in you as will your imagination. So again, doubt is the enemy of, of uh, imagination. <clears throat> uh, James chapter 1 says this here. It says, if you need wisdom, if you need wisdom, uh, if you want to know what God's dream is for your life, you want vision, you want to be able to imagine, if you need wisdom, uh, just ask God for it. Because he is generous and he enjoys giving to everyone. But when you ask, you must believe in faith and not doubt. For a doubtful mind is as unsettled as the wave of the sea that is driven back and forth and tossed by the wind. Such doubters can't decide anything. So that not only can they not decide anything, <clears throat> excuse me, they, listen, they can't imagine. They can't imagine and receive anything from the Lord. And so, um, see, so your imagination, once again, your imagination in your life is, is going to either govern, <clears throat> it's going to be governed by fear, <clears throat> governed by fear, or, <clears throat> or it's going to be covered, governed by faith. And, you know, I learned, a, I learned something about that word governor or, or a, a governor. When I was brand new in youth ministries, Terry and I went to Las Vegas at Trinity Life Center. I was 23. She was 19. <clears throat> and as a brand new youth pastor, we had organized an outing. And uh, because we we're in Las Vegas and there was, uh, other than the casinos, not, not, it wasn't then what it is today. But there was a, uh, a water park called Lake Dolores in Barstow, just right outside Barstow. Take us a couple of hours to get there. So it was one of my first outings. I was brand new at the church. And so we loaded up the buses. And I remember one of the uh, bus drivers' name was Red Yingling. Nice guy. Great, great guy. And so we got the buses going, and they were filled with, with students. And then... There were some grades that were kind of steep, and they were kind of a bummer because when you got a bus load filled with kids, you know, it, it, it's a lot of weight. We would go kind of slow up these grades. And then I would think to myself, well, you know, what goes up has got to go down, so I'll be able to pick up time going on the other side. I'm 23 years old. So I'm thinking, like, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get this bus going. And so we got the other side, and I started going, and I, and I, and I thought, at least if I can at least get up to, like, maybe 65 in this bus, you know, I'll, I'll make up some time. Well, I, I was going down, and all of a sudden I get to 55, and it was almost like we had bus troubles, because it was almost like if the engine would shut off, and, uh, and I, I would accelerate nothing, and I couldn't go past 55 miles an hour. It seemed, and I was like, man, something's wrong with this bus. So when you get back, you gotta fill out the reports, and uh, turn them in, if there's problems, you turn it in, and, and uh, uh, you let them know what's what's happening there. So, you know, I, I mentioned to the mechanic, I said, well, you know, um, I, I just couldn't go past 55 in the bus. I would be going downhill. I'd get to like 50, 53, 54. I'd think, okay, I'd hit 55, and it was like the thing was shut off. And uh, and the mechanic kind of smiled at me. And, uh, well, Pastor Sammy, what that is, he said, what they've installed in, in this bus is a governor. Now the governor says you can't go past 55, and so won't let the, the, the bus go past 55. So that was my first experience with what a governor in a vehicle. 
was it it uh, it controls the speed that you're going. You're not free to go over 55. And you know, I I uh, I thought about that when when speaking about imagination, and and I think there are there are governors in our lives that uh, that are built on fear, and it won't let us imagine. It won't let us dream. Those fears are just like that governor. They control our uh, our our lives. That anxiety. It just controls our lives. We're, we're not free to go past 55, as it were. And, uh, and God is saying, no, uh, I want to take the governor off of you. I want to take care of fear and anxiety. I want it to dissipate, and it can. And God speaks to us. The Lord speaks to you, and he speaks to me this morning. and says, I want you to move forward. In spite of your fears, I'm going to give you courage to move forward in spite of of your fears, free of a governor, and uh, and and imagine. God wants us to imagine. He wants us to uh, to imagine exactly what He can do, and what He desires to do in our lives. And so, it's really important for us, really important for us, to to be aware uh, of 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 fears and anxieties and what they can do to our imagination. Because see, sometimes. We're like, you probably have purchased helium balloons before, and you take them home and, uh, so you don't have to go to the store in the morning to pick one up to head to the party. And so these, you probably recognize that this helium balloon, it's up there on the ceiling, and uh, the next day you get up, and all of a sudden it starts to come down. And you think, you know, what's, what's going on here? Uh, it, it's losing, the, uh, the, the helium is losing its, its strength and its power. And listen... We don't want that to happen to our imagination. We want God to continue to fill us each and every day. Well, number six, <clears throat> this is the sixth thing uh, that we want to look at. It's God's spirit, because we want to know, okay, well, how do, I, how do I get air back in? You know, how do I get free from the governor that controls my life? How do I, what do I do? How do I refuel? How do I re-energize myself? And, and here it is, God's Spirit, God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and God's Word is what will refuel you and allow you to dream again and to imagine again what God wants to do in and through your life. The, uh, the scripture says this in John chapter 14. Jesus says, I will ask the Father, it's before he left, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper who will be with you forever, that helper is the spirit of truth. You'll know him because he is with you and he will be in you. You can circle that in your Bible. He will be in you. Uh, Psalm 119 says this here, open my eyes that I might see your, the truths of your law. Wonderful truths in your law. Help me to understand the meaning of your commandments and I will meditate. There's that word. I will meditate. I will imagine uh, that's imagine thinking about, considering. I'll meditate on your wonderful miracles. I'll meditate on your wonderful miracles. Listen, the key to a stronger, healthier imagination comes with a daily time with God. No substitute. There's no substitute. If you're not meeting with God on a daily basis, you heard me right. If you're not meeting with God on a daily basis and uh, spending time with the Lord in prayer, you're reading the scriptures. I'm not saying to read a whole book of the Bible, but you're spending some time reading a proverb, reading a psalm, reading a chapter in the Bible, praying and talking to the Lord. See, if you're not doing those things, I want you to know your helium balloon is close to the floor. No hope of imagination. No hope of dreaming God's dream for your life. No vision. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know how else to say that or how else to communicate that strongly enough is that if you're not with the Lord, um, you're not spending time with the, the God's word, claiming his promises, then I want you to know, friend, it, it's no wonder you can't imagine. It's no wonder you don't have a dream. It's no wonder there's a vacuum in your soul. God wants to fill it. He wants you to dream. So spend time 
with the Lord. In, in Job chapter 33, God speaks, the passage says, God speaks again and again through his people, but his people often don't recognize it. But he speaks, God speaks to us in dreams, yeah? God can speak to you through a dream. That's not weird. Um, God speaks to us in dreams, in visions of the night when the deep sleep falls on people as they lie in bed. God speaks to us in dreams. God gives visions. God speaks to us in, in uh, just that, that quiet, still voice in our souls. We can hear him speaking to us. He still speaks to us, and we'll hear him if we're listening. Isaiah chapter 50 says this here. says, the sovereign Lord has given me his words of wisdom so that I know what to say to all these weary ones. God has given me this verse on many, many occasions that morning by morning he awakens me and he opens my understanding with his will. And I know he's done that for many of you. And the reason why is because you're refueled on a daily basis. You look to the Holy Spirit and say, well, Holy Spirit, I need you to fill me with power and strength for this day. I can't do without you. I need you. And uh, looking at passages of Scripture, the promises of God, hiding them in your heart, it will cause you to dream again. It will cause your imagination to run wild in the Lord. The seventh thing is, growing in my character will clarify my vision. Growing in character spiritually will cause you to be able to imagine in much greater ways than you are right now. And uh, listen, a person who is mature, who is much more mature in the Lord, will have a clear vision of what God wants for them. This passage of scripture in Second Peter, if you'll turn to it, and uh, you may want to even make mark it up. Second Peter chapter one verses. 5 to 9, a, a tremendous passage of scripture. If you've been in church any amount of time, you probably know where we're going with this here. But this is what the Bible says about our character and developing character qualities in our lives that will cause us to experience the blessing of God. It causes us to experience uh, our imaginations going places they've never gone before in the Lord. And uh, it says this here, it says... To your faith, add goodness. To your faith, add goodness. And to your goodness, that's doing good to people. That's just doing good, being good. And to your goodness, add knowledge. Learn God's word. Study God's word. Um, and to your goodness, add knowledge. And to your knowledge, add self-control. And to your self-control, patience. These are fruits of the Spirit. Um, that's the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Those are... That's character quality. That's, that's a, a person who, who has these, who have embraced them and obtained them, and they live it out. That's a person of, of tremendous character. And as a result of it, it's a healthy person. They experience the blessing of God. It says, and to your patience, at service for God. So you've got gifts, talents, abilities. God's blessed you with treasures. Uh, that's why we worship him with tithe and with offerings. And, uh, and that's why when it says add service to God, God's given you talents and abilities. Not to sit on your hands spiritually, but to work for God. Well, what does that look like? Well, it may be teaching a Sunday school class. It may be working in Rangers or, or the Impact Girls Club. It might be helping out with Kids Club. It might be helping out with Good News Club on Tuesdays. Uh, every Tuesday, front parking lot at the church. Uh, meeting there starting at 3 o'clock to 4.30, uh, offering yourself. Well, so, well I, don't, I, I can't teach. Well, I can't say, well, listen, can you do registration? Can you give a food pack out to a needy family? So there's lots of different ways, many, many different ways. Uh, a kind word to your neighbor, taking something to a neighbor in need. There are many ways that you can do service for God. And to <clears throat> service for God, it says, add to this, add to the service to God, kindness, be nice, kindness for your brothers and your sisters in Christ. And then he goes on to say this here, and to this kindness and love for everyone. He says, these are tremendous qualities, character qualities in our lives. And then uh, there's this two-letter word, 
that, that wraps up this passage of scripture, this narrative here. It says, if, if all these things are in you and you are growing, if, if these things are in you and you're growing, they will help you to be useful and productive. And I want you to know, if, if that speaks to, to who you are, this passage, and your, your desire, you're pressing for that mark, I want you to know, you will be a person, you'll automatically begin to imagine and dream about what God can do in your life, in particular in the day in which we live. There are people that are thirsty, they're parched, they're thirsty for, for meaning and purpose in their life. They're, 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 they're dying for hope, and we have hope. We have Jesus Christ who will help them. And it says this here, uh, actually this is the last uh, part that says, but, so if, if all these things are in you and you're growing, to help you be useful and productive. And then it wraps up here. It says, but anyone who does not have these qualities cannot see clearly. In other words, they can't imagine. They can't imagine. And so the reason <clears throat> that you can't see God's vision is because, as we mentioned before, you need to mature, to grow in the Lord. And I'm going to wrap it up this morning with this here. The, uh, the eighth thing, if, we, if our dream is from God, it will be connected to his church and his plan for the world. The scripture says this here in the book of Acts, says, uh, uh, or Luke, says, Go ye therefore and make disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to do everything that I've commanded you, and lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. You know, I begin talking about this here, and I want to just end on this note, because, because again, I can't emphasize this enough, uh, because it's something I think about almost daily, is I've never, ever in my lifetime seen the need that we see in our communities, that we see in our culture today across this country. I don't care where you're from. New York, California, Florida, North Dakotas, Ohio. It, l listen, there's tremendous, tremendous hunger and need that is out there. So how, what does that look like? Well, look at the streets of the major cities. Um, look at, look at the, the, the news articles that are out there of people you know, running to the doctor, running to the pharmacy for a uh, for stuff like Valium, stuff that just to help bring a calmness to it, because they're, they're racked with fear. Um, they don't want to die. And listen, they don't want to die, and a lot of people that don't want to die, they don't want to die because they don't know where they're going. But we have the message. Let's dream, let's imagine God using us. Let's ask him for a vision to, uh, to move forward in spite of our fears. Courage, God give us courage to, uh, to share the most glorious gospel message, the message that's never, never been, ex nothing is, there's no message greater than the gospel message. That's why it's called the good news because the gospel is all about Jesus Christ's death, his sacrificial death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. He did that to offer hope and peace, forgiveness, clear conscience. And listen, if you're, listening this morning and you've never done that before you've never asked Christ to come into your life he's knocking at the door of your heart open it to him receive him today and he will cause you to dream again like you've never dreamed he'll cause you to imagine again like you've never imagined before but you will have the assurance that if something were to happen to you today you know where you would spend eternity because you placed your faith in Jesus Christ if you've never done it before, do it now. Do it now. And, uh, and God will, will come. And he'll bless you with eternal life, forgiveness of sin. And, uh, and he'll cause you to dream again. And to become alive again. That's what he desires. Maybe you've been serving the Lord. 
when you just haven't been spending as time with the Lord. He's, uh, he's been pushed out of the way. The busyness of life, the fears of life, the anxieties of life have just pushed that away, Bible reading and prayer. Listen, uh, come back. Say, Lord, I repent. I repent of, uh, of not trusting in you. And refocus your thoughts on the promises of God. Recommit yourself to the Lord. Not only will he bless you with peace, but you'll begin to imagine again, and God will use you in ways that you've never dreamed of. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful gift of imagination that you've given to us. You've allowed us to be able to dream, to have a vision, uh, great imagination, godly imagination. Lord, you, you've, you've blessed us with that gift. And I just pray, God, that you would minister to us and through us and out of us. And you'd cause us to see your dreams for our lives. And, uh, and, and Lord, that we would begin to imagine just who you are and what you long to do in our hearts and in our lives. I pray for each and every person who is listening this morning. Oh, God, would you just rest upon them, Holy Spirit, Surround them with your divine presence. Fill them with your presence. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, wash through uh, people's minds, will, and emotions. Wash through, Lord. Wash, Holy Spirit, all that's not of you out and replace it with your presence, with your peace, with your power. And Lord, we'll be grateful for it. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray it. Amen, and amen, and amen. Go dream again. Imagine again, like never before. May the Lord richly bless you, and we look forward to seeing many of you tonight at 5 o'clock in the courtyard area for our time of praise and worship and God's word. God bless you, everyone. Have a great rest of the day. See you at 5.